All right, welcome back. What I'm going to try now is try to figure out how to arrange these ones that I want to focus on. And then the other pieces I can always add in later. So to begin with, the one that's most important to me is this sign. So what I want to do, oops, let me undo, got to go to the right layer, is I'm hiding these other layers so that I can kind of see what I want. Now I'm leaving the uh, state down here mainly because I want to have some things popping out of the state. So I'm using the move tool and I'm moving this around and I'm going to go ahead and transform this and shrink this down just a little bit, but I want to have it popping up and out of the state. Uh, then I want to, since education is important and have this one for this piece and try to figure out where would I want this to be maybe a move this one around and maybe I want him pointing towards it yeah I'm gonna make him just a little bit larger I'm gonna tuck him down here the sign gets blocked though I don't like that so this is the thought process, trying to figure out, because I had some students asking like, what, how, do I, how do I even start to decide how to put them together? This is part of the challenge, is trying to figure out what do I really want to focus on? I'll try this part right there. And I'm gonna do a little thing here. I'm gonna press Control and click on the mask of this value so that I get this edge. And I'm going to go up here to the goal. I'm going to switch to my brush and I'm going to paint that away. So what that ends up doing is it looks like the sign is on top of him, but it's not. Then I'm going to deselect. I'm going to grab the guitar. Maybe I'll change the stacking order here kind of figure out maybe i'll make it look like he's maybe notice how there's this black line i'll show you to get rid of that if you happen to see that on yours the reason is is there is a mask issue and i'll show you what to do to fix that and try to make it look like it's kind of inside of there or uh like he's almost like he's playing it all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fix that edge real quick. So over here on the mask, I'm going to reveal the mask by pressing the Alt key. And see this edge? It has this little tiny bit of gray along that edge. That little bit of gray is what is creating that line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key. And I'm going to grab my lasso being careful not to get in the side here. Ah, so even with a mouse, I end up messing that up a little bit. All right, with something like that, now I can take my brush, bring my brush opacity all the way up to 100, and kind of paint that edge away. Now, the reason I use the lasso is I wanted to protect it because this does have an overspray, meaning when you see when you paint with this, See so yeah, there's like a little bit of a spray can look, but when I did the lasso, it stopped pretty sharp along that edge. It's mainly these areas right here that I'd want to be careful of where it might spray into the body of the guitar. So that's why I'm using the lasso. So I'm going to just grab that and then I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. Alt backspace will fill with whatever you have on the color at the top. And that's noise is annoying. All right. So it's a tedious little process, but it will get rid of that line pretty easily while still protecting what you've already masked off. Since you already spent a decent amount of time masking stuff, I want to make sure that you don't end up having to go back in and erase and start over with that. But now that gets rid of the line. Excellent. But I don't like that it's blocking the sign. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and control click on this bottom sign and on the guitar. I'm going to go ahead and mask that off. Now that I'm looking at this, I could potentially just move this up on top of everything, which now that I see that, I think I'm going to do. I'm just going to move that stacking order. There we go. That makes it a little bit easier. It saves me from having to uh, do that 
little adjustment. Okay. And last one I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over Michael Jordan. If I get the right layer, got to grab the thumbnail. Excellent. All right. I'm trying to think, where do I want him jumping out of? Maybe right there. Okay, so let me show you a way we can start tucking stuff inside of the state. So that's what I would do to start with, is figure out what do you really want to emphasize? And then how are you going to stack them on top of each other? Now, if you're gonna do the state kind of thing, let me show you what's happening here. So this one didn't get masked, so I'm just gonna grab my magic wand, going to hold down the shift key to select more. Since there's a solid line going around there, I think this is probably the easiest way to make that selection. And then I can hit the mask. Now it masks the wrong thing, so I'm gonna press Control or Command I. Excellent. Okay, not really liking what it's doing to that line. It looks like it did get kind of chunky. So I'm going to go ahead and invert that. We'll go back and play around with that one uh, later. I can show you a trick with with this. If we do some stuff with multiply, it'll duplicate. It'll uh, make it darker. But what I really want to do is I want to use this mask that I made to be able to hide these objects in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all of these pieces. So I'm selecting these top layers. I'm gonna to go to a new group. Now the cool thing with this group, I'm gonna hide that one, is I'm gonna press control and I'm gonna click on the mask that I made for the North Carolina state. Up here on the group, I can mask this group. So instead of going in and adding the mask to the edge of the mascot for the Tar Heels, and then the mask for the guitar, and then the mask for the sign, and then the mask here, the idea is if you've got them laid out the way you want, you can put on the group, you can actually make a mask. And now it did the opposite again of what I wanted, but that's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to this mask. So it did this bottom edge. Now this is the tricky part, but this is the magic. So what I can do now is I can come in and if I control click on Michael Jordan on the mask, I can grab my paintbrush. I'm clicking on the wrong layer. So I'm going to control click on the mask, I'm going to go to the group. I'm going to paint white. And what I'm going to do is I want to make sure I only paint to that edge. Deselect. It's a little sloppy. I'd have to go back in and clean that, but that's okay. Uh, and then here for the sign, can I look at that? I'm going to control click, go back to the mask. And this mask part is only, I would only do this once you are really happy with where you have those items. So you don't have to go back and clean it up each time. So I'm going to press control, click on the goal. And now what I'm doing is I'm just staying away from painting down here. So it'll make it look like he's actually popping out of the state. And then I will go to the goal. And let me go ahead and leave that there. I've got issues with, I don't like what I did with this line. So that I would have to play around with a little bit more. It also looks like I went too far with the guitar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse my selection. I just did control shift I. And on this one, so by having these masks, it allows you to go in and make a selection by using the control key or, yeah, right there, you can control key and be able to have that pulled out. 
And with something like this, I'm just going to go ahead and make the curves adjustment to darken. Kind of see what's happening there with the with the outline in the state. So that could be one potential method for being able to do it. But the key thing that I was looking at with this was trying to figure out a way to be able to protect the edges without having to redraw it. And then really the key thing was focusing on what do you really want us to see? And then once you see anything that you don't like, like I don't like these black edges, then I would go in on the mask so I'd pull my layers back up, which disappeared. So let's go back over here. Layers, there we go. Uh, and then go back in here and go and find which, where are those black lines coming from? Ah, black lines are on this mask. So then I could go in and refine the selection that I've made. So with this, I'm just using my lasso. You can use your paintbrush if you want. I'm just doing alt backspace on my keyboard or option backspace to fill, or you can always switch to your paintbrush and fill that in as well. I'm going to switch here to my magic wand. Yeah, I don't really like those edges, so I'm just going to cut into him a little bit. Better. You could spend forever cleaning up edges and stuff, and then once you zoom out, you may not notice it. So my recommendation is every once in a while when you're in too tight, zoom out, zoom back in. Sometimes turning the layer on and off will help you see if there's something that jumps out at you, like right there. I don't like that. So I am going to go over, I'm going to zoom in. grab that edge, fill it in, cleans it up. That's starting to look a little bit better. So that would be a way that you could make it look like it's popping out of the state where the stuff's tucked in. The key thing is, is you are adding to this mask that's on the group. So you used these to make individual selections and then you returned up to the group to kind of paint those selections away so that it, it hid the area. That one's a little trickier than uh, we've gotten into before. So if you're working on it, definitely send me a screencast and let me know which areas you're having an issue with because it does come down to the stacking order and it comes down to what kind of masks you make.